Happy New Year, and welcome to a new set of devotions in this new year. But you know, some things stay the same. We get to start our time together by listening to some beautiful piano music by our friend Jonathan. Let us pray. Thank you, O oh God, for the beauty of this day, for another day of life, and a time that we might gather together to hear your word and to have some conversation about it. We thank you for beautiful music and talented people sharing their gifts. Um, join us today and every day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So today we are beginning a new devotion series from the Gospel of Luke. We are starting right at the beginning of Luke, chapter 1, verses 1 through 25. And since Pastor Steve preached a wonderful sermon on this called Hush back on December 6th, and then Jonathan did a lovely devotion on this same passage on December 21st, I thought we could spend most of our time today just talking about Luke to give us the lens and the framework for this series. I encourage you to go to our website and our YouTube channel so that you can listen to both the sermon and the um, devotion again on Zechariah and Elizabeth. Who is Luke? Well, tradition says that he was a doctor and a Gentile, that is a non-Jew. Luke is a skilled writer and a good storyteller who is adept with the Greek language, demonstrating a remarkable knowledge of the Old Testament. And he has carefully compiled a full record of the ministry of Jesus and the development of the early church. It seems that Luke traveled around with the Apostle Paul for at least a couple of years, and he wrote nearly one-third of the New Testament with his two books— Luke, which is the story of Jesus, and Acts, which is how the story of how the church got started. Well, we know that there are four Gospels, of course, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you also probably know that Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the Synoptic Gospels, which means that they can be seen together. You can lay them out side by side and see many of the same stories often in a similar sequence or in similar and sometimes identical wording. Luke tells some beloved stories that are not in any of the other Gospels, like the Christmas story we just read, uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan, the widow who donated her last mite, 
the parable of the prodigal son and the road to Emmaus, all four gospels were written from a certain point of view. Each gospel contains a different structure, develops different themes and portrays the person of Jesus in its own unique way. Each of the gospel writers has a symbol that represents them. It, it's like their spirit animal. The emblem for Mark is a man. Mark is the simplest and most straightforward gospel. It's a great gospel to start with because Mark doesn't dilly-dally. He keeps the action moving. The symbol for Matthew is a lion. Matthew was a Jew writing specifically to the Jews, and he saw in Jesus the Messiah, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the one whom all the prophets had predicted. The emblem for John is the eagle. The eagle can fly higher than any other bird. John is the theological gospel. It, its flights of thought are higher than those of any other. And the symbol for Luke? Well, it's the calf. The calf is the animal for sacrifice. And Luke saw Jesus as the sacrifice for the entire world. Jesus is the savior for the Jew and the Gentile, for the sinner and the saint. Matthew and Mark don't even use the word savior in their account, in their gospel. And John only uses it one time. The Jesus we meet in Luke is compassionate and a friend to outcasts and underdogs like Samaritans, women, and the poor. As we work our way through Luke, I'd invite you to listen for some of these themes. First, that God's redemptive purpose is for Jesus to be the plan for salvation for all people. We'll hear a theme of the blessings of poverty and the dangers of wealth. Popular theology held that the rich were blessed by God, but Jesus turned popular theology on its head, maintaining that God would lift up the poor and cast out the rich. Watch for the theme of table fellowship. Jesus eats with tax collectors and sinners, with Pharisees, with the crowd, and with the disciples. Jesus is either going to a meal, at a meal, or coming from a meal. And he is ultimately revealed in the meal, in the breaking of the bread after his resurrection. We also see how Jesus models the role of a disciple throughout the Gospel of Luke. Jesus is empowered by the Spirit. He is compassionate toward the poor and oppressed. He heals and forgives. He prays and he dies a bold martyr's death. And to his disciples, to you and to me, Jesus says, follow me. So hear now the prologue to the Gospel of Luke as recorded in Luke 1, verses 1 through 4. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided, after investigating everything carefully from the very first, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, and to you, Diane, and Steve, and Alan, and Mingy, and Jonathan, and Don, and to all of you, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Thank you, O God, for the evangelist Luke and for all of the gospel writers. Pour out your spirit among us so that these words recorded in Luke's gospel might speak to us in a new way in this new year. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.